Hi guys, Steve here, and welcome to my beginner's guide to Warframe. Warframe is a free-to-play, third-person shooter where you play from a selection of space ninjas. Whatever platform you're playing on, the first thing you need to do is create a Warframe account if you don't already have one. Pause this video now and click the link in the description box below, and that will give your account a 7-day XP boost. The devs are changing the interior look of a ship soon, so I thought it'd be nice to show you what it did look like before you got the updated version. You'll also be getting a new video intro, but for now I'm going to show you the original start of the game. If you want to skip it, you can go to two and a half minutes. For generations you've slept. No purpose, no call to wake you. But now, something has risen from the ruins of the old war. The Twin Queens, the sisters, have sent their most beloved commander, Four, on an urgent mission. To protect the twisted crusade they have begun. To transform the scattered colonies into an empire. To see that the Tenno, hidden and asleep, will never awaken. I got caught. Right, your first choice is to pick which Warframe you want to play as, and there are three options. The first is Excalibur, which is a melee based Warframe. Its passive is 10% more damage and speed when using swords. Its first ability is to dash between enemies and slashing them with his exalted blade. That cuts them in half or causes huge damage. The second ability is to blind all enemies around you in a small radius for several seconds. The third ability is to shoot out swords in every direction, impaling enemies to the walls. And the fourth ability, Exalted Blade, is the one you'll use the most, where you shoot out energy swords in every direction you look, but do massive damage and can pass through walls. The second Warframe you can pick from is Mag, and she commands magnetic energy around her. The passive is that she pulls all items towards when she bullet jumps. Her first ability is to pull enemies towards her and stun them. It also does good damage. The second ability creates a bubble around an enemy, then all fire and enemies are pulled towards the centre. The more damage you do to the bubble, the more the enemy takes. The third ability depletes the enemy shields, plus makes them drop a shard that can use to do damage inside the bubble, and it also boosts the allies shields within range. And the last ability picks enemies up around you, crowd controls them in the air, then crushes them. The third Warframe is Vault, the speedster, and he can harness the electrical elements. The passive is when he moves across the ground he builds up an electric charge, which then can be released on his next attack. The first ability fires an electric bolt out towards an enemy, damaging and stunning them. That then moves out to nearby enemies. The second ability boosts movement speed for you and all your allies within range when casting, making you move really quickly like Sonic the Hedgehog. On the third ability you create an electrical shield that stops incoming damage. You can put multiple shields down and electrocute them with your first ability, and also pick a shield up and carry it with you. The fourth ability electrocutes and paralyzes surrounding enemies. They in turn become Tesla coils and shock all nearby enemies as well. Basically it's a huge damage and crowd control ability. If you were to describe them in traditional terms, Maggie's like a mage, a bit squishy, but with powerful abilities. She's great fun to play and quite easy to farm from a boss, so you can make her quite easily later on. Vault's fun as well if you like moving fast. Again a bit squishy, but has the shields and speed to help the teammates. An easiest one to make later because you just need to join a clan to get the blueprints for him. Excalibur is a fighter, he's more tanky than the rest. He's the easiest one to play, but that makes him boring to play later on because you just be spamming exhaustion. 
sorted blade over time. It's the hardest one to farm later on because the boss you have to kill to get the blueprints is a pain in the ass. For that reason, I'm going to pick Excalibur. But to be honest, I'd advise you to pick Mag because she's a lot more fun to play. Wake up, Tenno. 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 <sighs> I see the Lotus has tried to wake you. Pity she's too late. You're my prize now, Denno. No! We are taking this one with us! What has he done to you? I can't lose another Tenno. I'm surging your Warframe's power systems. Use your power. Defend yourself. As you can see, I'm Excalibur, I'm unarmed, and I only have my first ability to do damage. This is a tutorial stage to get you used to how to play. A few waves of enemies will come through the gate, and killing them will help practice your first ability. An extraction ship is on its way, but the Grenier will be hunting you. Arm yourself. The first thing you need to do is go to your control options and lower your sensitivity. It always starts off way too high, and that would make targeting harder. This way you'll be able to hit things without your aim going all over the place. The yellow marker tells you which direction to go. It's the same objective marker all through the game. But before we get to that, I'm going to teach you basic movement. Run forward and then slide along the floor. Do it again, now this time when you're sliding press jump. You'll jump in the air and do what's called a bullet jump. This is usually the fastest way to get around Warframe, plus you evade enemy fire. It's always best to keep moving because if you stand still you're likely to get shot. You're also able to double jump if you want to go longer distances or get higher up. After jumping over the hole in the bridge, you'll get to choose your first weapon. It doesn't really matter which one you pick, but as Excalibur, go for the sword. Because remember, he has a 10% damage and speed buff for his passive. If you're mag or vault, you can go for the staff if you like. Spam your melee button to use a weapon. Now I'm going to show you how to do a slam attack. Double jump in the air and then look down to the ground. Press the melee button and you'll dive down into the ground, knocking all enemies into the air. And I followed up at the end there with my first ability slash. Some objects are too low to walk past. So press crouch and you'll slide underneath. You can do that while running and you'll have a nice fluid slide action. There's a cache of weapons ahead. Grab what you can. If you come up behind an enemy without them noticing a melee attack, you can stealth kill with them. Now we get to choose our secondary weapon. You could have throwing knives, which are silent to you so you can do stealth kills. These are good on spy missions when you don't want the enemy to detect you. Or a semi-automatic pistol that does make noise. There is no wrong option. But for me, I'm going to have a knife to do silent kills, as I'm going to pick a rifle from the main weapon, and that does make a lot of noise. The extraction point is up ahead. Hurry, before Vor finds out you've escaped. Zoom in to aim, then fire to use your weapon. Whatever weapon you've picked, when you use it, you're going to have to reload. Projectile weapons like throwing knives are slightly harder to use than guns, because they need time to get to the target, and there's a slight delay. Take your time, look around and enjoy the game, there's no rush. Salvage team, why have you not reported it? To get under there it wants you to run and then crouch and slide underneath it. Next we come to a storage room, there's some lockers and some resources on the floor. You can damage a small chest to get rewards from it. The red lockers you can't open unless you've got a mod. The green ones you can to get resources and cash. It tells you in the bottom middle what you've picked up. Those resources you can break. They highlight themselves on the screen by glowing. You can break them with a melee weapon or shoot them. You don't have anything when you're starting off, so collect as much as you can. You're going to need the credits and resources to build things. You made it. There's the extraction ship. Hmm. 
You're not ready to face war now. Use your melee weapon to block the beam and get inside. If you have your melee weapon out and face the enemy, you block some of its damage. Your shields and health are in the top right corner. Blue is your shields and red is your health. You can increase them later on with mods. My decrepit heart is pounding. This one is stronger than the rest. Lock the area down. This Tenno is mine. Quick, get to the console and release the lockdown. Do that and I will guide you to your old ship. It's your only chance. The Queens want to destroy you, but I need to know more. Kill the minions, but ignore the boss. You need to get to the console and activate it to release a lockdown on your ship. Get out of there, Tenno. You will have to face Boar another time, when you're fully restored. Rhaenyra, my sons, prepare the reinforcements. We need that Tenno. In the bottom right you have your weapon selected, it's ammo, then underneath your abilities. Because I'm low level I've only got one ability active at the moment. The blue line at the bottom is your energy pool. Again you can increase that later with mods. A tenno flows like fire over the battle terrain. Do you remember how to dash across walls? Now you've got to double jump a long distance to the other side. Run forward, jump, then when you're in the air, jump again. You can run at walls by jumping on them, then holding a jump button and run forward. Again break over flashing resources and chests. You'll get materials, credits, ammo, health and energy orbs. Sometimes even really valuable items. Alright, I think I've killed everyone. You don't have to. Next we choose our primary weapon. It's a choice between an automatic rifle and a longbow that kills enemies silently. It is satisfying to kill people with a bow as you can stick them to the wall and it's good to keep quiet when you're on spy missions. I'm going to go for your assault rifle for now. I'm not sure what Vor has done to your Warframe but we cannot remove it now. Just keep going. Your ship is up ahead. Because it's easy to use you just have to look at the target and press fire. I use this for the main distance killing. Your Warframe is out of power. Use another weapon. I'm throwing knives of silent kills. But it's entirely up to you with what weapons you pick. You can switch between your primary and secondary weapon, or press the melee button to equip the melee. Carry on going towards a yellow marker, as that's where your ship is. There it is, your ship. Hurry, Vor's reinforcements must be on their way. Be careful not to fall in the water. Just checking there's no one behind me. Disengage the suppression Some items over there on the harvest. Ship. You'll have to bypass the security on that panel. My shield's gone down. It will rejuvenate over time. Kill all the Grenier guards. Now go to the console and activate your ship. You'll need to press your jump button when the rotating marker is on the segments. The consoles are normally skill based like this or puzzle based. Stop touching me you are my senses deceiving me? Operator, is that you? Enemy reinforcements are here. Ship Cephalon, we require immediate extraction. The operator is in danger. I will need a few moments to cycle the engines. Keep going. Nobody knows you're here. Tenno, are you afraid? You cannot hide from me, sword's eyes. I've marked you. You will return to me. Now you need to defend your ship and kill all the reinforcements as it starts up. Tenno, the ship is ready. It's time to leave. 
Now you go, you've escaped safely. This ship is going to be your main home and base of operations. That's the start and tutorial finished. Now we get to the main game. I knew we had a shared passion, Hunter. You'll get a reward for logging in each day. And that's my first one. Your home is the ship that rescued you. Operator, you have returned. I am Ordis, ship Cephalon. A shadow of my former self. I cannot serve the Operator in such a condition. Order me to self-destruct. I will understand. The Grenier are ravenous for this old technology. It is superior to theirs. Perhaps there are systems left in the orbiter compartment? I'll quickly show you the interior of the ship. Look at this mess. Those savages. Components have been removed. The lower orbiter compartments have no life support. Why did the operator abandon me? Arsenal management could be restored if the operator wishes it. The ship's been looted, and the only console you can activate is your arsenal. You honor Ordis. Now I can supply the operator with better modded firepower. Oh, the violation. Those have been looted as well. We need to figure out what Captain Vor has done to you and stop him, but we'll need help. I found a communication segment we might salvage for your ship. When you are ready, activate your navigation system. Ordis hopes the operator will punish the Grenier for dismantling it. In your arsenal, you can choose different warframes, weapons and equipment, choose which companion to take later on, and change the look of everything you own. These are the standard warframes currently available. Each and every one is unique with their own different abilities. As this game is free to play, they make money by charging for additional cosmetic items. You don't need to buy them and you can play as long as you want without spending any money. Hundreds of hours of gameplay to enjoy without spending a dime. Each Warframe has its own cosmetic skins. As well as buying them, you can earn some by doing missions, and others are given away for free on special events. My Warframe looks pretty basic at the moment, but you can buy and earn different armour attachments. Sandanas which are like capes and different colour sets to make you look better. Speaking of which, I'm going to change my colours. Almost every segment of your army can change to a different colour. The different colour palettes down the side are locked and you need to pay for them. However, you can get just about every colour free from special occasions, like reds, pinks and whites from Valentine's Day, and yellow, orange, greens and blues if you log on at St. Patrick's Day, etc. I'm going to change my trim to the closest to Nublet's orange, there you go, that looks better. And the lights. They're orange as well. Do the energy glow. There we go, started my customization. Bit of a way to go yet though. One of the best ways to customize your Warframe is with a Sandana. I'll just show you a few examples. These ones are paid for, but you can also get free ones as well. Platinum is a real money in-game currency, which you can earn by trading with other players. If you put the time in to do the missions and farm blueprints, you can trade them for Platinum for people who don't have the time or can't get them. That way you'll earn the money without having to spend any, then you can get yourself some good cosmetics and skins. Like I say, you can play for hundreds or thousands of hours completely free, and you only have to pay money to support the devs if you think the game is worth it, which most people do. All the Warframes and all the weapons can be earned in-game. It's just some of the cosmetic stuff you might have to pay for if you really want it. Right, I'm just going to customise a trim to my rifle to match my Warframe. Ooh, that's a bit too much orange. Let's find... Nope, not that one, that's a handle. There we go, that's a trim. Matching orange, black and white. Nublet's colours. Here's some of the handguns. G7 
change your energy to the throwing daggers to orange as well. Just got to do my sword. There you go, the trims orange. Completely matching now. I don't have a companion. And we'll go into gear later. Right, now I'm now going to show you the missions to get your main systems up and running. Go to the top of your ship, at the front and the middle. And that's your navigation console. We show you where the missions are and where to go. The yellow markers on that one, that's the only one you can select at the moment. It's flashing blue and it wants you to do it. But before I do, keep an eye on the top right, because that's where your mail comes in. You'll get sent messages of what to do for quests, and also you get reward notifications there. The cross on the top right shows you the quest you currently need to do. We're on Vor's Prize. Other quest items will unlock as you progress. I'll zoom out, that's a galaxy map. We start at Earth. You need to unlock these places, so you can travel to the next planet. Then keep going on to the next planet, then the next. You want to eventually unlock everywhere. You'll need access for some areas to do your missions, and other areas to get resources and do events. Right, let's go back to Earth and do our first proper mission. It's a spy one and it's to restore my ship's comms. For every mission you get a loading screen, it's usually your ship, and you can use the movement keys to move it around. The segment you need is in a nearby data vault. Infiltrate the vault and retrieve the segment. The Ascaris is working, breaking through. I see the shadows of your mind. Vault put a device on you to try and control you, and you've got to do a sequence of missions to get it removed. I'm going to take you through each mission to make sure you know what to do. Then I'm going to show you how to activate each console and how to use them. This data vault is equipped with a variety of security measures. How you defeat those measures is up to you. Take your time, explore places and enjoy the game. There's no need to rush when you're just starting off. It's good to find out where you can go, what you can open up and what resources you can find. That's a dead end and that's too much trouble to get up there. It's going to work around. You've got a map in the top left. That will always help you with where to go. I'm just gathering resources and money at the moment. Don't need to kill him. Either red ones for now. Open up the greens. Three breakables. Four. Grab the orange stuff, the crafting material. Open that locker. Now you're going to get some doors and find that they're closed and you can't get in. You think, how are you going to get in there? Well, go to the console, activate it by pressing jump on every section, and that will open a door for you. You can also use the consoles to turn off the alarms. Try and get past the laser walls without them being detected. Will that console open anything? Nope. Let's go around. Try and find a way in. Look at your map. You can kill them as long as you do it quickly and they don't trigger any alarms. Now go to the console. Open that. If the interaction comes up. There you go. Open a locker. And here's where the data is stored. work a clean extraction with no alarms the segment is yours head to extraction as every moment passes the ascaris burrows deeper revealing you now after we make our way back to the ship you follow the green marker that's your escape exit just make sure i don't leave any witnesses Go to the green mark. 
Yellow is your objective, green is to escape and leave the area. Look at the map. Remember if you want to slam, jump up high in the air, then look at the ground and press attack. only half the money was. No chests up there. Here's one. Oh, got some doggies after me. You can have those as your fighting companion later on. And tame your own. And breed them. Right, make your way up. There's the landing pad. Go to it and you get extracted. You'll get over mission and reward data at the end of every mission. That's how much XP we've got. The crafting resources in the bottom left. New mod cards to increase your warframe and your weapon strength. And how many kills you did. After each mission you load back to your ship. Orbiter Void Cloak engaging. Welcome back, Operator. The Operator has recovered a segment. <laughs> Install it now. Orders patiently awaits its installation. Get communications online. Press the action I key. I must analyze what Vor's Ascaris is doing to your Warframe. This technology is beyond the premiere. It must be Corpus in origin. Systems engaging. I suppose this will do. Ordis is grateful. Right, now we have access to the market. The operator is now connected with other Tenno in the system. The operator may now contact all black market scumbags. Contact arms dealers. Go to categories in the top left and you can see all the different sections. Excellent idea, Ordis. Tenno. We need to make contact with a corpus defector sympathetic to the Tenno cause. They will, of course, require compensation. You see what Ordis is referring to, Operator? In this case, compensation will not be credits. It will be freedom. I've updated navigation. You will need to break him out of a Grenier Gulag. These are all the basic versions of the current Warframes available. You can also get Prime versions which look better and are a bit stronger, but I'll go into that later. At first glance of a market, you might think you're forced to buy Platinum with real money, or that it's pay to win, but it's not and you don't have to spend anything. You only start off with 50 Plat. Do not spend this on anything except Warframe slots and weapon slots, so you can have more Warframes and weapons later on. If you've got money, yes you can buy the Warframe straight away with Platinum. But underneath that where my cursor is, you'll see Blueprint. If you want a new Warframe, you come to the market and purchase a Blueprint with credits. Then you do missions and farm a component Blueprint so you can build your Warframe for free. No Platinum required. And it's the same with weapons. That's why you need to save your Platinum to buy additional Warframe slots and weapon slots. Otherwise you won't be able to switch to different Warframes or weapons. Our next mission is to rescue an imprisoned arms dealer. I've clicked on a flashy yellow and blue light, and it's counting down to load. The loading screen for each mission is really quick. arms dealer is named Darvo. He's being held in the prison block on the other side of this factory complex. Every mission map you play in Warframe is randomly generated. The objective's the same, but the level's created from a random tile set, reconfigured each time you go into it. So all my mission maps will be slightly different to yours. How many Grenier slaves died to build this place? Darbo is out for himself, but he is sympathetic toward the Tenno. The Grenier must have found out. The Ascaris is working, breaking through. 
I see the shadows of your mind. Don't let Moore distract you. Focus on the mission. It's our only hope of figuring out this link with him. The alarm's been activated. You can turn it off though at a console. There we go. Keep following the yellow marker. First ability. This is the prison block. If you can avoid detection by the warden, it may be easier to get Darbo out. Bypass the security so we can enter. On rescue missions, it's best to do stealthy kills or really quick ones without the enemy seeing you. Otherwise, they'll activate the alarm and they'll set a countdown going to execute the hostage. If that happens and they die, you fail the mission. Credits. Bang, right in the kisser. Go to the console. Activate that to get in the prison wing. Go to each cell marked. Go to the console and activate it. Search these cells for Darbo. He has to be here somewhere. Found him straight I away. I will give my entourage to meet us in orbit once we're clear of this mess. Extraction is ready. Remember, your success here depends on getting Darbo out of there, alive. If you go up to him and press your action button, you'll give him your second weapon to defend himself. That's the same with all prisoners on rescue missions. Have I walked past the console? Yes, I did. The Lotus must be desperate to send you fetching greedy fools from the corpus. The blue marker is a prisoner you need to defend. If you get too far ahead of him, he'll teleport to you. And you need to head to the green exit marker for you to escape with him. is behind me. Do a bit of resource collecting on the way. Every little helps. Should I get that in there? Don't have time at the moment. Now the Ascaris has burrowed deep enough to give me influence. Shall we see how your shields work? The Ascaris is letting Vor control your shield. We must figure out how to remove it. Avoid taking damage while I try and block him. Oh, he's giving me space worms. And he's loaded my shields. Keep heading towards green. Like I say, your map layout will probably be different. Get all the juicy, flashy chests. The alarm's been turned on, but we're near the end anyway. else. And there's the exit. You'll get a lot of achievements early on. Got some new cards. 
but we're flawed ones. I'll go into that later. Here's some stats. Not so much resources I've got. The Breton guns leveled up. So is my sword. I see the operator can enable the mod segment now. Ordis will be delighted to show you how to upgrade your arsenal. May I recommend fire? Install the segment. And now you'll be able to equip mods to make yourself more powerful. Operator, I've linked the mod segment to your arsenal now. No need to thank me. Uh, upgrade your Warframe now. Go to the arsenal to see the weapon upgrade options you have. Make your way to your arsenal. And now you'll notice you've got an upgrade tab. An excellent find, Operator. There are hundreds of these mods to locate. If my calculations are correct, there are exactly a lot of possibilities. Right, to increase the power of your Warframe and weapons, you'll need to add mods to it. Your cards are down the bottom, and the spaces to place them are up above. You'll notice that some spaces have a symbol in the top right. If you put a card with the same symbol in that space, you will halve the number of points that card uses. You've only got a certain amount of capacity points in the top left. That increases when you level up. If I place this card down in a slot without a symbol, it will use two points. However, if I drag a card to a slot with a matching symbol, that will halve the number of points the card uses. You saw in the top right of a card, the number go down to one. Then if I move it to an empty slot, it'll go back up to two. I remove that card and we only have three points available. If I then drag a card that uses four points into the same symbol slot, the number of points used is half. The card goes down to two points used with one point spare remaining. I only have one point left to work with, but the vitality card is two points. However, again, if I drag it into the slot with a matching symbol, it will halve it to one and as you can see, it fits. When you're starting off and getting new cards, the quickest way to equip them is to let the game do it for you. Click Actions in the bottom right, then on the left click Auto Install, and the game will equip the cards it thinks best for you. There's no point yet doing your own builds as you haven't got enough cards, and you don't want to be levelling them up yet because the cards are flawed and you'd be wasting your resources to do so. We'll be covering that later when I've got better cards. With me matching card symbols up, I managed to use 6 points worth of cards when I only had 3 points to play with. You can double the amount of points, therefore your strength of your Warframe, by fitting an Orokin Reactor. You'll be able to earn these in game for free, but if you've got the money and want it straight away, you can buy it with Plat. Polarization and swap polarity are to do with adding more symbols to the empty spaces and moving them around, but you can't use them now. Thanks for helping me out back there. I'm in your debt, and I often pay my debts. I recognize that device. It's a parasitic restraint. We corpus use something similar to keep our robotics in line. So, to settle my debt, I give you a very expensive blueprint. For free! Because I like you. <laughs> and well, a lot of my customers don't live long with these grenier dogs chewing up the system. Here, use your foundry to build a countermeasure device from this blueprint. Good luck. Vorus Ascaris is burrowing into your Warframe. I'm worried it will affect your mind. I can't lose you, Tenno. We must restore the ship's foundry immediately. A nearby ore extraction colony will have the foundry technology you need. I am certain they will share it with you. Its location has been added to your navigation console. Before you go on the next mission, fit mods to your weapons like you did with your Warframe. These will be your weapon strength. Leveling up your Warframe and equipment will give you more points to play with. However, if you don't fit mods to them, they'll remain weak. We'll go into leveling up your mods to make them stronger later. I don't have a fighting companion yet, but I'll show you how to get that and what it does in another video. These are the companions you can make or buy. You can equip them with different weapons. They have different abilities and they fly above your shoulder helping you. On gear you can fit different equipment to your menu wheel. I'll buy and fit the scanner later. Emotes lets you go into different poses. Right, let's get on with the next mission. And that's to get the foundry working.
Go to your nav console, click the flashing blue light, locate a foundry segment. Tenno, we may have a problem. The colony is unresponsive. Get to the surface so we can see what's going on. Ah, the game automatically puts you in a group if other people are playing the same mission. I'll show you how to change those settings so you can play alone or with friends after the mission. There's me. There's two randos. I was afraid of this. The Grenier are here, and I cannot find any signs of living colonists. You still have a job to do. Find the Foundry segment. Head towards Yellow Marker. Collect everything on the way. Ones that joined the new players. This was once a prosperous independent colony until the Grenier arrived. The Queens fear you, but I will show them their love. Keep heading towards yellow. I deliver you to them. Tenno, are you there? The signal cannot be boosted any further. Hurry, we will run out of time. Alarm's gone off. There's a slight delay in throwing the knives for it to reach a target. Just try and aim where he's going instead of where he is. There's a foundry segment. Good. Your ship is one step closer to completion. Now, there is one more thing you need to do. Eliminate all Grenier and provide justice for the colonists. Oh, we wiped them all out. Soon the worm will be in your spine, and I will control this war frame of yours. I will purge your doting mother and bring you home. Doesn't sound very pleasant. Right, on the map in the top left, you see all the enemies marked in red. Go to their direction and kill them all. If the enemies are further away, you'll start getting large red markers to show you where they are. You can see a counter in the top left, underneath the map, to show you how many is left. That's 20 out of 30 kills. You can also shoot with barrels if you like big explosions, which I do. That will normally kill all the enemies around it. That's all the targets cleared. Just got to clean up the leftovers. Open that. Now we can make our way to the green marker and exit the map. Do 
jump through the pipe. If the fan's stuck, you can shoot it out. The exit. These. Go to the marker. If you're with a group, you're going to have to wait for them to come. A 60 second countdown starts, so they've got until then to get here. So if you have somebody who's got lost, you'll be able to leave without having to wait for them. But make sure you stay at the exit, because if you leave the area, the counter might reset. Then you have to wait another 60 seconds. You almost made it, but time's gonna run out. Another job well executed. Right, I've got some mods, but they're flawed. Oh, I've got one that's not. Uh, I'll be able to upgrade that. Like I say, don't upgrade your flawed ones, because it's not worth it, and you'll be able to get better unflawed ones. Your foundry segment is ready for installation, operator. Will the operator build a cephalon to replace me? Right, to sort your group options out, press escape. Mouse over your name, then leave group. Then click on the world, and you can select which options you want to have. Public, friends only, invite only, or solo. I'd advise you to play solo or with your friends for the first few days. Because if you get put in a group with experienced players, they'll just run ahead, you'll be playing catch up all the time and you won't know what's going on. Foundry restored. Here the operator will craft many powerful weapons and tools to exact revenge for dismantling me. To expand your arsenal. Oh no. Operator, our component storage has been looted as well. Typical corpus. Sure, the blueprint is free, but jack up the components. Operator, we will need resources in order to build the countermeasure blueprint. The guy we rescued gave us a blueprint to build a device, but we haven't got enough resources to make it. Tenno, I just received a very explicit message from your ship, Sevlon. If you're looking for resources, why didn't you just say so? I know just the place, but I demand an apology. My mother is no gymnast, and she would never eat those things. You can go straight to... Operator, I am sorry. Wow. You may want to get a new ship, Cephalon, when you can afford it. <laughs> that one seems glitched. I've marked your navigation with a place I know. It's good for resources, if you can stand the cold. Right, click on a mission, and let's begin. Darvo's intel suggests that this outpost is host to several rich supply caches. Raid the caches and take what you need. This outpost belongs to the Corpus, a secretive but extremely powerful merchant cult known to be working with the Grenier. Darvo will fill you in. Legions of robots, mindless automatons, freaking lasers. These guides are bad news, but they're also loaded, which is why you're here. That's a cryo barrel, it has a freeze effect instead of an exploding one. Still took my shields and health down though. Right, the other guys we were fighting with Grenier, they had good armour. These guys are corpus and they've got shields. That locker symbol's white, and you can hear that ringing. That means there's a mission resource in there for you. Just get these first. Keep moving. There is more here. Technically, this is stealing, but don't let that bother you. The Corpus aren't exactly beacons of moral fortitude either. They sell anything to anyone. You're tough. Don't get me wrong. I like profits a lot, but I don't sell my wares to the damned Grenier. That's unforgivable. 
jungle resources. Full of yellow markers. Just get that. No one around. You can rush if you want, but it might be best to take things slow until you get used to the game. The different ammo types you find is orange for pistol, green for shotgun, blue for rifle, purple for sniper and bow, yellow for heavy, and white for any weapon. That's what a mod looks like when it's dropped on the floor. Go up to it and you can collect it. Go through the vent. That's the security camera. If I see you, sometimes the security cameras lock the door. You've got to destroy it to reopen them again. There's usually a few secret rooms and passages throughout the map. But getting out again might be a bit of a pain. There we go, made it. Alright, get back on the platform. Pull over the yellow marker. Whoop, I guess I'm not sneaky anymore. Deactivate the alarm. It's a different puzzle type where you've got to match your lines up. And they get a lot harder than that one. See if there's anything in there. Anything around the back. You can get a mod later on to show you where everything is on the map. It's a bit nimble. If you jump and hold your aim button, you glide. And if you use that alongside a bullet jump, you'll go quite a long way. There's another locker. One more to go. Good work, but you're not done yet. Find the next cache. You almost have what you need. You have murdered my sons and disgraced me before my queens. But soon, the Ascaris will complete its task and bring you to me. Not if I can help it, it won't. There's a lot of juices in there. Let's shoot a barrel, like a nice explosion. It's a bit close, son. No energy. I have to try and melee him. Have some of that. Those flying ones can give you other shields. Right, the cache is there to the right. Let's quickly get the containers over here. Get rid of the resources I can. Time for extraction. That reception's a bit bad. 
The Ascorus has reached your mind and rendered your Lotus mute. You will return to me over your own free will. Don't bet on it, buddy. Too many there. Oh. <laughs> I died. So in a mission you have four revives. If you're by yourself like I am, you're gonna have to use one. If you use all four and go down again, you fail the mission. However, if you're with teammates and you go down, they can go up to you and revive you. And as long as someone else gets you up, it doesn't count as a revive. Now I've got some energy back. Activate the alarm. Don't need to, I think I'm near the end as it is. Yep. There's a pickup pad. You are mine. That looks like I've escaped to me. Galab is leveled up, so is my Breton. Operator, are you all right? This part of your journey is over, Tenno. I admire you for your struggle, but now <laughs> I am part of you. Lotus, do something. Help the operator. We Grenier are millions strong, but with a flaw, we are diseased, rotting, sterile. But now, we have you! Operator, do not abandon me again. Build the countermeasure. I did this for my love. My queens, they will forgive my insubordination when I deliver you to them. Our love will be reborn as we feed on your divine blood. Our children will flourish without disease. And I will die at last, at peace. Father, grandfather. What do you think you're doing? Right, we've made a device to remove his wormy and claimed it. Oh, get off me. What a waste. Ten up. Good. You managed to disarm Vor's Ascaris. I thought. I thought I lost you. I've got a couple more points, I'll upgrade my stuff. Oh no, the Ascaris had a tampering failsafe. It's burrowed into you and armed itself. We'll need to find Vor before it detonates. Get to navigation. Boarding a Grenier ship to access their personnel records will be the fastest way to find Vor. Operator, what are you waiting for? Ordis assumes finding Vor implies violence? I just also equip over mods. Hello, Operator. May I suggest you access navigation and save your life? For my sake. Right, now we need to get a nav segment. Oh, 
the systems on this Grenier Galleon can be made compatible with your ship. Find and extract a navigation segment. Lots of resources to start with. You have murdered my sons and disgraced me before my queens. Go for it. But soon, the Ascaris will complete its task and bring you to me. Nah, it's not gonna happen either. So it's worth checking every room. That console's off, no alarm. Surprise! Everything in there. Missed one. You get chests and resources hidden away in the sides as well. Again, press the jump button in the right place. You get more money with the later on missions than you do on the starter ones. Too far off a path. Just collect any resources to see on the way. Could shoot him, but I think I'll blow him up. Maps extended. Couldn't see past that door. Got no energy left. Of course you're a bit weak because you're just starting off. When you get all four abilities and you can boost your energy shields and health you feel a lot stronger. Alright let's activate the console. Let's get this segment out and grab it. We have what we... wait. Tenno, coordinates in this nav segment put the galleon on a direct course to a convoy of colonists. 
You have a choice. You can extract now, or you can disable this galleon and save the colonists. Saving the colonists could jeopardize this mission. I recommend you head straight to extraction, but the choice is yours. The Ascaris failsafe is attacking your systems. Your shield capacity has just been halved. You're wasting precious time, Tenno. You could have left then if you wanted. I'm going to save the colonists. The ship's power systems. Destroy Activate the, the console. It'll open up the reactor. And destroy the targets. Destroy the fuel injectors. Oh. Died again. Went down. Oh, that's why. Yeah, I didn't see him. <laughs> Go around. Come up behind him. Yes, there's also turrets in this game. Done that. Now I better escape before the ship blows up. Is there, a, is there a way through that door? Can't see the console. Maybe I came in on a different door. No one's locked as well. Oh, there's the console. Looking here. Oh, I better get out of here before the ship blows up. Oh, all the doors are on silent lockdown. There's no alarm going off. Let's carry on to green. Shortcut up there, and up to two eye. Keep looking in your map in the top left. Leave no one left alive. Loot the ship before it blows up. They won't need it. Sometimes you get good resources at the end. So check the lockers and crates to see if you get anything. And that will do. The colonist ship has escaped. I admire your noble intentions, Tenno. But you must survive for the future of the system. No, I wasn't worried. I was walking up them. Um... Right, one of the reasons why I was killing everyone is that I wanted to hit my first mastery rank test. There it is in the bottom right. When you are ready, proceed to the navigation console. Let me just install this. The detonator is charging up. You need to bring Vor down. He thinks he can capture you again. Don't worry. I will be with you. Let us show him how much you have learned. Right, if you saw the mastery tab pop up in the bottom right, that means I've got enough experience to do my mastery rank trial. You'll need a higher mastery rank to unlock higher tier weapons. Press escape and then click on mastery rank up. It will show you the rewards and ask you to accept the challenge. If you did fail one, you'll have to wait 24 hours before you can try it again. A Tenno must be a master of all their weapons. Prove yourself with your primary weapon. But don't worry, they start off fairly easy, but they get harder and harder. In this challenge, you're only allowed to use your primary weapon. Excellent. 
and There's continue. a countdown in the top left. So you need to finish a challenge before then. I believe you can handle more. It's like a training simulator. Completed. So don't forget to keep an eye out for all your mastery trials and do them whenever you can. A formidable performance. This test is now complete. Mission complete. Excellent work, Tenno. I should have unlocked some extra weapon blueprints I could buy from the market now. The more rank ups you do, the more weapon blueprints you can buy. Right, now on to our last mission to defeat Vor. Don't forget to visit your arsenal first to upgrade your mods. Right, I'm ready to take him on. Confront Captain Vor. Are you ready, Tenno? Facing Vor is the only way to rid yourself of him permanently. Yep, I'm gonna whoop it up him. Assassination mission. This is our chance. Vor has been stripped of his elite guard. He is vulnerable. Take him out. Anything in here? That's all of it. Do some silent killing until they notice me. When you see marks on a wall like this, it means you can run up and down them to get to a different level. It's like a visual marker for you. could have saved the Grenier, but they cast me out. Maybe it's not too late to draw your divine blood. No, it is too late. He's trying to activate the alarm. Bring in more reinforcements. That. I will put you down like a rabbit cobra. There's a sniper grenade. Everything. You can leave the resources and crates if you want, but I should start off with nothing, every bit helps. An experienced player who's got millions of credits and tons of resources will be shouting at the screen now saying just leave it all, because I would have forgot what it's like to have nothing. I'm getting close to my first boss fight. The alarm's been sounded. Get that energy. Oh, full up. Just 
can activate the alarm. A reinforcement soft so don't come up behind me. And this is a boss arena. Do you realize your lotus has sent you to die? You've located the VIP. Time to go to work. Right, I've only got three abilities at the moment. Strike through the Vrinier. As Excalibur can blind him and melee him. Mag should put your bubble on him and shoot it. And Volt put your shield down and hide behind it shooting him. But if he gets close to it, electrocute your shield. Now this guy can teleport and get his shields and health back. So you're going to have to keep lowering his health over and over until you win. You don't have to take his minions out, but I am so I don't get outnumbered. Shields are gone. His health sum is gone. They go to teleport out and get it all back again. As you saw, I killed just about everyone I've seen in every mission. And I've only managed to get enough XP to unlock my third ability. So if you see any tutorials saying just use your Exalted Blade, which is your fourth ability, yeah, that's not going to work. Always keep moving or you're likely to get shot and die. This will hurt. Right, thin the numbers a bit. Just take out his sniper. Your corpse will serve us well. Alright, with those dead, now I can concentrate on the boss. I'll disorientate him with my blind. You will join us. One there we go. Or Ten -o, look. The Ascaris detonator has just disintegrated. It's as if it was directly connected to Vor. You're done here. Go to extraction. Just finish these off. That's done, now I can go to the green marker and evacuate from the map. Just get it on the source before I go. Another reason why I kill everyone is there's a chance for drop mods. Tunnel, shoot the broken fan so we can get out the other side. That's my third ability. Shoot swords up, pins everyone to the wall. Check if there's anything good down here. You can get stars from lockers so you can sell for endo. A currency you need to upgrade your cards. 
There we go. That's the escape room. He's trying to hide. Trying to ambush me at the end. They won't be bothering us anymore. Let's get out of here. Leveled up my Breton and my swords. You've done it, Tenno. Voris Ascaris is gone. You are free now. But your work has just begun. The origin system is in chaos, and it needs you, Tenno. Gives a chance I just escaped. Vor was just a part of the Grenier machine, and we have seen that the Corpus have begun amassing weapons of their own. It is a dangerous time. Going on holiday, then. Ordis will gladly assist the operator in cutting a bloody path in whatever mission they choose. We will be at your side. There will be others, too. It is time for the Tenno to return. So, what mission will you do next? Right, that's the starting section of the game finished. We are on Earth, and you've got all these blue missions to complete. Some missions are locked, so you've got to do the one before it to open up. To get to other worlds, you need to unlock the prerequisites for the junctions. Then fight the Tenno guarding them, and that'll let you go to the other worlds. You'll also get some rewards that are cycling in the bottom left. One of them is a blueprint for your first companion. Clear as much as Earth as you can, then do the Venus Junction. Then you've got this planet to clear. Then you've got to go to Mercury. Back to Earth. And work your way to Mars. One of the main goals you should do while starting off is to go around each planet, do every mission, so you can freely move around the solar system. You'll get events popping up, and if you haven't unlocked the planet missions, you won't be able to do them, because you won't have access. Well done everyone, we have completed our first quest. Many more to do. Don't forget to subscribe and like if this was helpful. Let me take you around the ship and show you the rest of the essentials. Okay, to the left we have the codex. Here you'll be able to learn about the things in Warframe. First page is your quests. Done that one. It tells you what you need to do to open them. Then you can scroll down to read what you need to do for the others. There's quite a few of them. And they're usually quite long quests. They're like little story missions. Then on the universe, you can find information about anything you want. Warframes, companions. These are ones you can have fighting with you. Kubrus, which are the dogs. Other drones. Taxon's going to be your first companion. As you get a blueprint to make it when you do your first junction. You can equip it with a mod that vacuums up all the resources around you. These are the Warframes in the game currently. The normal ones and the Prime versions. Just click on them to find information about them. The different factions. Not unlocked them yet. You got your mod cards. There are hundreds of them. Your weapons. Ordis has been counting stars, operator. All accounted for. Again, there's probably hundreds of them, all unique with different abilities. Relics. You get a relics for completing missions. When you open those, they give you rewards for prime blueprint items. Your void relic station will be deactivated until you finish Mars. But when you complete a relic mission, you'll get one of these items as a reward. And you can boost the chance of getting a reward you want by adding void tracers. I've gone into more detail about this on another video. If you're looking for information about anything, just type it into the codex search box and it'll find it for you. The market we've briefly covered before. This is where you buy your Warframe and Weapon Blueprints with credits. Click on Categories to find a section you want, or you could just type it in in the search bar underneath it. Most of the cosmetics you will have to buy with Platinum or Money. They're not essential, they just make you look good. And as I said, you can play the game without spending anything. These are some of the cosmetics for your Flying Companion. Different skins. And different modules to attach to them. 
Yes, you can pay platinum to instantly unlock the weapons or warframes, but that kind of ruin the game for you, as it removes the goals and satisfaction of earning it yourself. I would just get cosmetic stuff. Now you might be wondering if I'm holding back on y'all. Hmm, dreamers. The Nightwave console is next to the ramp. It gives you weekly challenges to do for rewards at the top. When you've got some credits, go to credit offerings down the bottom. And you can buy helmets, resources, some blueprints, weapons. But the most important thing, what I found out later is, that you can buy Orokin reactors and catalysts, which will double the amount of points, therefore strength, your weapons and Warframe has. So as a beginner, definitely buy these first. Get a reactor for the Warframe you have now, then a few more for the ones you have in the future, then lots of Orokin catalysts for all your weapons. That way when you've got all your upgraded mod cards, you can equip twice as many as you can now. To demonstrate, I'll just equip this one. Now my capacity points in the top left have jumped from 30 to 60. And I can fit double the amount of mod points when I upgrade them, which I'll be coming to in a minute. Nightwave seems to be a continuous event at the time of recording this, but we might change it out later with something else. If so, I'll put where to get the catalysts and reactors in the comments below. Ta ta lovelies. Down a ramp to the right is your foundry. Here you can build absolutely anything you have a blueprint for, if you can get resources. Weapons, warframes, it's pretty easy to work out. If you ever need to find any resources to make something at the foundry, you can mouse over the extractor icon on the bottom right of the screen. That will tell you everything you can farm from that planet. Each planet has its own different resources, and they'll drop when you're doing missions there. Across from it on the left is your mod station. Now this is going to be really important. When you do missions, you'll collect mod cards. These will increase the strength of your weapons and abilities, and some will even give you new ones. There are probably hundreds of them, and this is just a small sample of what I've collected over the last few missions. When you're starting off, you'll get rubbish flawed mods. These are broken and not worth upgrading. You'll notice in the bottom middle of every mod card are some small grey dots. Each dot represents how many times you can upgrade that card. When you click on a card, you can sell it for credits or dissolve it for endo, which is a resource to upgrade your cards. This one I've picked is a normal non-flawed one that'll increase my shields. Once you've selected a card, click fusion in the top left the card's unranked at the moment, click the little plus sign and it'll tell you how much endo and credits it'll cost to upgrade. The more you upgrade it, the more endo and credits it'll cost you. You'll see what a card's strength will increase to in the top left. So the mod started off with 40% shields, now it's given me 160. Like I said, don't upgrade the flawed ones because they start off originally weaker. To upgrade it'll cost me 70 endo, which I can get from missions, and over 3000 credits. Some of your later cards could cost like 2 million credits to upgrade. Now I've upgraded a card, I want to equip it, so go to your arsenal. Click upgrade on your warframe. Remove the old cards. I can place it in myself. It will halve the points used because I'll match the symbols up. Otherwise you can go to auto install and let the game do it for you. It'll put the cards in it thinks best, and at this moment it's probably right. But when you're creating your own builds, you want to take some of the cards out and put your own in. Auto install is good for getting your base cards in, but to fine tune it later on in game it's best to do it yourself. To show you the last two things, we need to go to the future. This is a glimpse of things to come. You can do this any time really, but go to your market. In search type scan. Buy several codex scanners, they're fairly cheap. You get 25 per purchase. Okay, now that's done. Go back to your arsenal. There's my little doggy. You'll get to see me hatch out later. Now go to gear, down the bottom. Right, click on a spot and select the codex scanner. 
because you'll need to scan three Cephalon fragments before you get to the Phobis Junction on Mars, otherwise you won't be able to pass. You usually get one Cephalon fragment hidden away on the map somewhere. It's a glowy blue thing. Press Q on the PC to bring up your equipment. I don't know what it is on a console. Select the scanner to equip it. Aim at it to zoom in. Then your attack button to scan it. You've got to do that three times before you reach Phobis Junction. The final thing to help you get Endo to upgrade your mod cards is that when you get to Mars, visit Maru's Bazaar. Once a week she gives you a quest to obtain an Ayaton sculpture, but it's going to be tricky, you're going to have to do a bit of Laura Croft and fight your way to an obstacle course, and make your way to the end before the time runs out. When doing missions, searching lockers and destroying crates, you might come across an Ayaton star. It'll either be blue like this one, or an orange. Pick them up because they're quite valuable. You can sell them separately for Endo, but you won't get much. They're ornaments you need to place in a sculpture that you get from Maru's quest or that you find on a map when you're doing the mission. And those Ayaton sculptures are pretty rare. This is an easy version of the assault course she sends you to do. I'm showing it you so you get an idea of what to expect. If you don't get to the end before the time runs out, you fail and you'll lose everything you've picked up. All the resources and credits you've gathered. I did it as I got to the pressure pad. Now jump up to the levels above. Follow the yellow marker. My, oh my. I think you and that's a sculpture. That's what we came here for. Your job's done. Don't forget to destroy all the crates. You stand on pressure pads and activate the defences though. You can jump past them or shoot them and take them out. Then when you've cleared the area, make your way to the exit. And claim your reward. Once you're back aboard your ship, go to your mod station, click the Ayrton Treasures, I think it looks like a butterfly, and you'll find your sculptures and stars you've collected. Click on a sculpture to examine it. It's only worth 325 endo at the moment. Click on an empty slot to install a star. Now the price of the sculpture has gone up to 625. Do it again. Now it's 992. And for a third time, it goes up to 1425. Click on your other sculpture. It's a different kind. It starts at 325. The first star takes it up to 625. The amber star is more expensive. And it jumps to 1108. And the third star brings it up to 1,575. So when you sell a sculpture when it's full up with stars. It looks quite nice too. And if you've got enough endo, you can keep it on your ship as a decoration. It's much better to sell the combined sculpture, because if you sold them separately, you'd only get 100 endo for the amber star, and only 50 endo for the cyan star, instead of the completed sculptures, which are around about 1,500 endo. Once I've finished, go back to Maru's Bazaar and speak with her. Click on Extract Endo from Ayrton Items, select your sculpture, then Extract Endo, select the other one, and that's how you get loads of Endo to upgrade your mod cards. And that's what you call one hell of a beginner's guide to Warframe. It took me an entire week to do guys, so please like and subscribe if you found it helpful. And don't forget to share it with your friends if they're about to start playing because now you know everything you need to to get started in Warframe. But that's not all. Click on the links at the end because I'll be starting an entire Let's Play series of every mission in Warframe with my friend Michelle, taking you through the entire game, mission by mission, so you'll know what to do when you get there. So if there's anything I missed, or you need to know later on, you'll find it there. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, as I'll be posting other helpful videos on this great free-to-play game. Oh, and don't forget to create an account from the link below if you want a 7 day XP boost. Goodbye!